Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking to you about the interaction system that comes with Survival Game Kit V2. Um, so uh, right now I'm in one of the example rooms uh, that is in the showcase level and this just gives some basic interaction examples. These are just blueprints that have had um, the interaction system added to them and then a little bit of code um, to, do, to do these different things. Um, so I'm going to go through and just use these as examples and explain what they're doing and um, things that you can do to expand them. So uh, I'll start with the remove interaction uh, example. So I'm just going to open up its blueprint. And in here you can see we've got some information that you can uh, read through uh, in your own time. Um, but most of the interaction system comes from, if you go to class settings, and you can see implemented interfaces, it's uh, Survival Game Kit Interaction Interface. Um, and this can be added using the drop down here. Um, and this system, sorry, this blueprint already has this. So if I go to Interaction, you can see uh, this is where you'll find most of, uh, uh, most of the functions that you'll find useful. So the main one being um, Interact. So this is called when the player interacts with your blueprint. Um, and that gives you the a reference to the player inventory. So this is the player that interacted with it and the action that that player wants to do to this to this uh, blueprint. Um, so in here, we've just got it set up so that um, this, this player inventory um, variable here is just this input. Um, so we're searching the player that interacted with us. Um, we're searching his inventory for the uh, item. So I think the item set to uh, Apple. So we're searching his inventory for the Apple. Um, remove item is ticked on. So if we find the Apple, we remove it. And then down here, we're just um, basically telling the player to create a notification saying, you know, this item was removed or this item wasn't removed. Um, so that's, you know, everything that's going on in this blueprint uh, when the player interacts with it. Um, then we've got uh, interact name, so this is uh, what the uh, UI shows when you look at the actor. Possible actions, so this is um, when you look at an actor you get the little menu. These are the different options that will come up. So this only has one option which is uh, deposit and that's an interact uh, action. And then importantly, uh, you need to always make sure this is uh, ticked on in here, uh, allow interaction. If this isn't ticked on then none of this will work. Um, so that's a little quick overview of, you know, these are four are typically going to be the most um, used uh, functions. Um, what we can do is we can actually create our own blueprint and make something, um, you know, happen when we interact with it. So I'll create a new blueprint. Again, this is all just an uh, example to give you an idea of how, um, of how interaction works. So I've got my new blueprint. I've just created this. So I'm going to add a cube. Uh, like that. Um, one thing to keep in mind is the mesh that you use for your blueprint must have collision, otherwise the player won't be able to interact with it. Um, to check if your mesh has collision, um, you can uh, go to the stack mesh here and click the browse. So I'm using an, an, uh, an engine one, so it's taking me here, but um, if you click that magnifying glass, it will take you to uh, the mesh that you use. And when we're in here, you want to click the collision and show simple collision. Um, and you can see we've got this green sort of outline, that's collision. If yours doesn't have that, you need to go to collision and use one of these, uh, sorry, one of these options here to add collision to it. Epic have documentation on how all of this works, but this is super important. If your mesh doesn't have collision, this won't work. Um, so make sure you have that. Um, so now we're back in our blueprint and I've got my cube. Um, so by default, you won't have any of those functions that I had in my uh, remove one here. That's because we're not using the interface. So we'll go to class settings, uh, interfaces, and we're going to select add. And we'll search for interac uh, interaction interface. So we'll use that. And you can see when we added that, we actually got uh, our functions appear here. We can hit compile. And just like that, we've got all of our functions that we want to use. So we can open up interact. And just like our uh, other blueprint, we've got this function here. Um, if, you, uh, if you've if you got code in the event graph that you want to call, um, 
remember you can just uh, create a custom event we'll call this um, event and uh, you can just call that through here so we can do call um, what do they call it event and we can uh, select the event so what will happen if we do this is you know this event here on our um, event graph will be called whenever we interact um, but we don't need that for this video that was just to let you know about that um, but yeah we can drag out from here and we can access pretty much anything about the player we can get his health and we can decrease his health increase his health we can get his current health um, we can uh, damage him so we can search for damage uh, you want to use survival game kit damage so you can see we've got the uh, survival game kit damage here um, we can uh, search the inventory so we can do uh, search player inventory is what you'd want to use to search for an item um, we can check if it has a weapon magazine we can any any sort of functions from the player inventory we can check in here and uh, use um, say we had multiple things the player could do with this um, blueprint so we could drag out from action and search for switch and you can see now we have a way to switch between what our player is doing <clears throat> so um, this is really useful for more complicated blueprints um, then we've got our interact name we can set this to whatever we like I'll just call this uh, video or video like that um, possible actions so this kind of ties into what I was just saying about this um, possible actions is is uh, the types of actions our player can do so I'll drag out and do uh, make array and the first one we can drag out and do make again so here we're making an action so we can say um, I don't know this player can the players can interact with this blueprint and we'll say um, um, interact this is just the name that will come up in the uh, menu when the player looks at the blueprint and then but if we wanted to have multiple actions we could just click the add pin and do make again and say we wanted one for um, open we'll just call this one open now over in our interact we can um, have code run for if it's interacted with so we'll I'll just create a print screen to give you guys an idea um, we'll leave that as hello and then if open we'll put uh, open like this so um, when our player interacts with the, the cube it will either print hello or open depending on the action we pick so uh, we'll just drag this into the world here and I'll hit play and oh we forgot the most important part in the new blueprint we need to make sure allow interaction is set to true uh, I forgot about it then as well so hit play and when we look at it uh, we have two uh, text blocks for some reason let's have a look we go back to blueprint possible actions oh we've got to tick actions found uh, well I sorry I forgot to tick it um, you need to make sure you tick that otherwise you'll get that problem so if we hit play now there we go we can we have interact and our open and uh, if you press F we'll get hello because we're on interact and if I press F on open we'll get open you can see that we're running different code uh, depending on the action that our player um, took um, so just running over here to look at the different examples these are pretty much the same as what we're already looking at now apart from the add item um, I can open this up to show you guys and explain a little bit about it um, so in here um, <clears throat> we first thing we do is we create a new item so what this does is it's mainly used for uh, container items and equipment items um, we basically tell the global inventory um, we want to create a new item it's this item ID with this amount and then um, defaults are used for weapons so um, if defaults is ticked on if we were creating a weapon um, it would add all of its default attachments uh, if starting items is true if this if we were spawning a container it would have all of its um, starting items um, rotated as whether or not the item will be rotated um, and then replicated um, typically you'll want this ticked on if you're adding to the player um, but something to keep in mind is we're not creating an item in the world we're kind of creating its data and then we're adding it to the player using the attempt to add 
item. Um, you can see there's some information here that sort of explains what I'm trying to say. Um, so what we're doing is we're basically just taking the add item, which I believe is an apple. Yeah, apple. We're telling the global inventory to create an apple item. It, it does that. Then we're adding that item to our player's inventory here. Um, over here, we're basically saying if there's any uh, remaining items after trying to add, we'll just spawn that item into the world using the spawn dropped item um, event. And then after we've done all of that, we'll create an invocation, tell the player that we've collected a new item. Um, so that's just a basic breakdown of you know what, what it's like in here. Um, that's pretty much it for the interaction system. It can be really sort of simple or you can you know use the um, actions and have a lot of different things that the player can do. Um, one thing that I will show you how to do is how to create more actions. So if I drag out from here, you can see I have a set number of actions. Um, these are world actions. So um, what we'll do is we'll go to E world actions. Um, so the best thing to do is um, use the search bar. So we'll do E underscore world. And you can see we found our world actions. We'll open that up and see we've got a list of all of the different actions. So I wanted to create a completely new one. I could hit the new button, name it whatever I like, and um, it will then show up in our uh, blueprint. So I'll do that now actually. Um, we'll just call this video action. And now if I uh, save it and we go back to our, I think we're in add item, yeah. Uh, you can see we've got our new video action here. So we can run code off of that. And um, if I go back to our blueprint here, we can actually click the drop downs and we can select video action in our possible actions as well. So using this, you can really do some cool stuff and have a lot of, a lot of different options for your actors. Um, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, if you have any questions, leave a comment. Um, feel free to join the Discord, which I'll link in the description. And uh, thank you for watching.